Hey everybody, it is Carrie, your friendly neighborhood makerspace librarian. We have taken our science show on the road today, outside into this frozen wonderland. I am braving this very balmy, barely double digit temperatures, so that we can learn about frozen bubbles, which are pretty cool. So I have a cup here, and what I have done is made my own bubble solution. So I use dish soap and water, and we added a secret ingredient, the same one that we added when we did our unpoppable bubbles, because it helps the bubbles be a little bit stronger and hold together better, which we're definitely gonna need today. Glycerin, I added a little bit of glycerin. So what we're gonna do is once again, we are gonna use our pipette to try and blow some bubbles and see if it's cold enough that we can either get them to freeze or see the frost crystals inside. Let's give it a try. Now, if you've been in the makerspace or upstairs in Kids Chaos, you've probably heard me talk a lot about how, you know, science has a lot to do with failing and trying again. And this video is no exception. It actually is going to cover three days of attempting our frozen bubble challenge. So here I am on day one, outside, trying to see if I can get the bubbles to stick in the snow, if I can get them to hang off the end of the wand, and not having a whole lot of luck. So just remember when you're trying science experiments, try lots of different things and don't get too frustrated. Sometimes it takes a while. Here we are at day two, guys. So one of the issues that we're having is that the air in our lungs is warm and that can contribute to the bubble popping because warm air expands. So one of the things that we did was add glycerin to our dish soap and water if you remember, a bubble is just a thin layer of water sandwiched between two layers of soap molecules. That water evaporates and the bubble pops. The glycerin slows down the evaporation of the water and that will extend the life of the bubble. It also makes the wall a little bit thicker. So when I'm blowing these and trying to get the bubble to sit down on the snow or stay on the end of my pipette, the glycerin can help that bubble do that. But bubbles are still delicate. And sometimes the cold, it's just too much. So we keep trying and we keep trying and we keep trying. Still day two still trying. And what we're going to see with this next one, once it comes into focus, is that there is starting to be a frost pattern on this bubble. You can see it kind of stick out from the rest of it. And I was really hoping that this one would last long enough, but you can tell by the way it's bouncing around, there's a little bit more wind than I had thought there was going to be. And so unfortunately, day two, is also unsuccessful. The next attempt gets even frostier. You can see that it's holding its shape and there's definitely some ice crystals forming in there. <laughs> Unfortunately, the cold was just too much for that one as well. But day three, and I think we have figured it out. So I left the solution outside before I even tried blowing bubbles to let it cool down so that hopefully it would match some of the temperature from outside. I found a nice patch of snow, there is no wind, and as you can see, we've got some beautiful frost just covering that bubble. You can see some little snow in the air there as well. So you can see the frost patterns. You can see it's almost a solid shape. We'll see if that we can get this to repeat at least one more time.
And here on that next attempt, you can just watch the frost crystals grow up the back of that bubble as more frost is reaching downward from the top. So cool. So enjoy the rest of that bubble and thanks for watching another science short guys. I hope to see you back next week.